All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our talk on storytelling. Sloan and I are really excited to be here with you today. Well, we're not actually here with you. We're <laughs> virtually here, which is, you know, just weird. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but, you know, in these COVID times, we're doing the best we can. Yeah, we really can't wait to be back um, in person. We enjoyed the conference last year so much. So we're very excited to be invited to give a few talks. And our other talk is on guerrilla marketing. If you didn't see that on Wednesday, I think they recorded, you know, they're sharing the recordings for a while. And so this morning we wanna to talk to you about storytelling, which is gonna be a fun subject. So to get started, I'm gonna tell you a little story about myself. So, I have wanted to be a firefighter as long as I can remember. And there was something about my dad and that pager going off in the middle of the night. And everybody would jump up and dad would run out the door. And then of course he was careful with the stories he shared afterwards. But just this idea, he felt like such a hero to me. And I always wanted to serve my community that way. And so I did, this is me and my dad. And up until a back injury, um, this is what I did. And so after that, I left the fire service and, and came to work with Mac. And that's how we got where we are now. All right, a little bit about me. Um, I've always been really passionate about communications and um, even special districts. And what's been really fun is my career began um, in this photo here where you can see working with the local school on how to create a website. And then that's translated into us last year at, um, you know, at the Special Districts Association of Colorado Conference. Um, I got to tell the story of Greg Hobbs um, before introducing him as our guest speaker. So we have a lot of fun with this subject and we have just a lot of fun together um, visiting with you all and meeting you at the conference. And we're looking forward to telling you about storytelling. Yeah, so here, here's our little intro slide, but we wanted to start with a little video just so that we could feel like we were actually talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a good talk. So here's why we're here as a company. So Streamline builds online communication and collaboration tools for special districts. And we're the only company in the world that only serves special districts in this way. We're the only ones building these very specialized tools to help you all do your job. And we feel very strongly that we need to work together to strengthen the voices of districts across the country. We're gonna talk a little bit about that um, here in, in a little while, why we think it's so important. But you know, we feel like we are special districts, even though we're actually a company that serves special districts, we're all in this together. And then I feel like these states that have special district organizations like Colorado, like California and a few others, really need to step up and help all special districts tell their story. So what we're going to cover today is talking about storytelling and how it's different from just writing. Um, we're going to talk about why it's so important that special districts get their story out there. Uh, to be clear on what the special district story is, um, including sort of the unique history within Colorado. And we're also going to look at examples and tips. There are some districts out there that are so good about talking about their impact on the community, and it makes a huge difference. Yeah, so how is storytelling different than just writing? Um, we're gonna go into this quite a bit, and we're gonna talk about different types of writing. You know, there are factual things like press releases and stuff like that, but telling a story is a little bit different. Through storytelling, you're really trying to create a connection and pull the person into the story with you so that it becomes a shared story between you and the reader. So just to use this to, as an example, I was using some images um, to kind of help us understand this because sometimes words can be a little more difficult, but images can really tell a story of their own. So this one is pretty factual image. It looks like it's construction, maybe not super inspiring, um, maybe especially unappealing to somebody who's anti-growth in your area or something like that who sees this. So then our next photo, maybe a little more interesting, a little more personal. There might be a little more of a story here. Like maybe construction had to stop because there was a big storm, but then the employees are back at it and just dedicated, coming back, building better, as everybody says. Or maybe 
the story is about a family that's so excited to move into their first apartment in this complex that's being built or into this brand new community or use the park down the street that's being created. Maybe that's the story. So as I said, it's, it's a connection, but it also takes somebody on a journey. And, and if they can see themselves as part of the story, it will become more memorable. It will make them feel nicer towards you. It will make them feel happier to be connected to you. The next time they hear about your district, they will tend to have a favorable opinion if you've made them feel this way. And it's all about connecting. Stories really are about connecting. And so we really want to get good at this so that the stories that you're telling are very personal. And when I say personal, I'm saying like, use connections to individuals and connect to actual people, like highlight people in your stories if you can. If you can highlight a specific employee in this first example, how flooding can affect a neighborhood with a focus on the employee who's helping mitigate that. In this second example, how metropolitan districts help communities thrive and children grow up strong. Have some children or some people who live in that community or who are excited about moving into that community, feature them. Um, how park and recreation districts give the children a place to enjoy the outdoors, of course, that's an easy story to tell. And how water and sanitation districts provide essential services, but also protect the, the environment. So all of these are um, wonderful ways of telling stories. And I've got a resource for you. This is a quote from Annette Simmons and the book, The Story Factor is a very, very good book. Storytelling moves us into the place where we trust what we know, even if it can't be measured, packaged, or validated empirically. Next, we're going to talk about why bother telling your story at all. I mean, many special districts are doing their work and they say, you know, what does it matter if anybody, you know, knows what we're doing? We don't need to be in the business of advertising or public relations. Well, it's really not about being slick. It's just about the fact that if you're not telling your story, somebody else is. So there can be some examples such as just making sure that if, you know, in the absence of a clear story from you, people will make things up. Or the only narrative that comes out might be highlighted by the publicity of a few bad apples. Here's an example from John Oliver. Special districts, are so ubiquitous. special districts are so ubiquitous and sometimes have so little accountability, states may not even know how many they have or how much they spend. A few years back, Idaho launched an investigation of special districts with objective one being identify how many special districts <laughs> there are in Idaho. And when Kentucky investigated, its auditor found that 40% of its districts that were required to didn't even file proper budgets. I mean, this is, this is an extraordinary mess. As one of my good friends says, you can't make this up. Yeah, and that's not the kind of publicity we want. And the challenge is lots of people watch John Oliver, right? So before that John Oliver video, which came out in 2016, the majority of people in this country had no idea what a special district was. So imagine you're someone who assumes that cities and counties are providing all of your services, don't really understand there's this other local government, the most local form, right? And suddenly the only thing that you've been told about special districts is that video. So, and we see this in social media too, you know, um, watchdog groups, um, so if you need to be able to counter inform the public, like Sloan said, you know, this is really, really important. We can't allow like only watchdog groups to be defining the entire majority of special districts. Right. And the challenge with that, of course, is we all know social media tends to towards the negative anyway. Mm -hmm. And so it's such an easy way if people that last example is someone who's retired, got angry at this rec, park and rec district years ago. And ever since then, anything that shows up in his social media feed, he reshares and bashes this poor district like over and over and over again. And the other value of telling your story is it's another way to make connection during a time of social distancing. So, uh, you know, there's, there's so many positive stories and things that can be reflected upon. And it's nice to put some good news and good storytelling out there. So, you know, as Sloan and I said, you know, if you're not telling your story, 
who will? People maybe against a necessary bond. Um, I know many of us have, uh, or many districts have talked to us, you know, they're doing a fee increase or they have a bond measure. And if it's time to do that fee increase and you haven't been telling your story or you don't already have a relationship with the public, it's almost too late. It's true. It just happened with my water district in my hometown. They had, hadn't had raised rates in like 20 years. Infrastructure is crumbling, of course. It's a water district. And they decided they needed to raise rates. They didn't do any storytelling around it. It was just like, we're putting this on the ballot. We really need to because, you know, infrastructure, pipes, lots of facts, lots of numbers. And it, it was shot down. They weren't able to raise their rates. It failed. And so they got smart and came back, backed up a little bit and decided to do some storytelling around the why behind this and the reason they hadn't raised rates in so long and the real need for it. And it passed. Yeah. And so it's not like a nice to have, but storytelling is essential for your existence. It's absolutely essential. It so really what is. is that story? Sloan's going to talk to us a little bit about this. Yeah. So most of the districts we work with tend to focus so specifically on the services, the particular services that they that they provide that they don't think to tell the larger story. I remember we were doing a discovery conversation with a sanitation district years ago and everyone around the table had to write their mission statement or a mission statement in their own words. Like what, what's your noble cause? What's your purpose? And we go around the room and some of it was actually extremely extremely inspiring, and this is a sanitation district, you'd think that wouldn't really be that inspiring. People were so focused on taking the fear away, like making sure they were doing good customer service and people felt really comfortable. We get to the general manager and she says, we keep the poop in the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true, right? But is really, is that the whole story? And that became their billboard campaign, if I remember. Yep. Just kidding. No, definitely not. <laughs> like they're <laughs> There are ways to tell your story and there are ways maybe not to be too <laughs> crass in how you tell your story. You're but right. it's true. And if, and if you think about, if you're not keeping the poop in the pipes, that is definitely what everyone would recognize the value of the district. Like it is yeah. very important. <laughs> so. Right. Right. Well, that's another subject we talk about a lot is sometimes special districts do such a great job that people think you're irrelevant because they don't have mosquitoes or, you know, fires are being handled so well, or, um, you know, whatever else is happening, you're doing such a great job that they're like, well, why do we need them? Right. right. Like the best districts are being taken for granted and yeah. that is a sign of a good job, but it presents kind of a dilemma when you rely on public support. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about the size of your story, the type of your story. So, is it the story of buildings, of progress? Is it a story of flood control, of like the services themselves? Maybe, maybe. Is it the story of jobs, um, the economy, growth, um, people working together? It could be. As we said before, is it the story of the people you serve and how you serve them? Better, you know, better, very good and definitely personal. Or is it the untold story of American infrastructure? This is actually quoting Mac when he said this one day as we were talking about this topic and how we were gonna present it. Special districts are the backbone of this country. And the more you can weave that into your story, the better for all special districts and local government. So let's take a look at the numbers. This was, this was fun. So slow down. 50 states in the United States. Of course, there's only one state in Colorado, right? Okay, so now let's look at municipalities. So cities, towns, this surprised the heck out of me. There's almost 20,000 of them, but look at how many of them have little small populations. It's kind of crazy, right? Lots of rural. So in Colorado, you've got 271 municipalities and it actually the next little click will break it down. Towns, cities, and two city county governments. We actually have one of those in California. San Francisco is a city county government as well. And then look at this, 38,000 special districts in the US, 2,400-ish in Colorado, which means we win. <laughs> Gotta click again, Mac, we win. There we go, <laughs> just kidding. But really, I mean, if you think about those numbers, that's kind of crazy. I mean, there are just so many special districts in this country and all are so important. And like I like to say, unsung heroes. Of, of local government, of course. 
so we're trying to really this theme sorry mac if you could go back one this theme is really trying to get you to think bigger about your place in the world and in the services you provide and the, and the connection to your community and everything else so here's a couple of things that we really wanted to point out getting people to understand how you affect their lives in positive ways how maybe there aren't mosquitoes in your neighborhood because of the amazing work you're doing or anything like that where you can connect them to what you're up to and let them feel your mission i mean the districts that we talk to are so mission driven and so service oriented that being able to tell your story in that way is important okay now you can go mac all right so it's just so exciting to talk about the examples of good storytelling so and th these were hard to find so we really had to look around like so and I it took us a while to find examples of districts that were really telling their stories but we found some great ones and back to the point of you know the story to tell it's it's not one that's really told directly but what's so powerful about special districts and why we get so passionate about this talk is that the overwhelming majority of districts are serving their communities well and are a better choice than the alternatives um, either not having the services or putting them through a much larger government or through investor owned utilities that have to pay out to shareholders like the yeah. I mean, numerous sure. studies have shown this like over and over again that like special districts are just a good way for communities to organize it restores yeah. democracy at the most local level and trust in government um, and like we said you know if you you do a really good job and everybody takes you for granted uh, but you can be wiped out by larger or more like sleek and sophisticated organizations that are better at pr and managing the impression of the public and spending a lot more money on pr right so there again is a plug for our guerrilla marketing talk that was on wednesday <laughs> that, that you can still access i think but but it's true here in california pacific gas and electric which is investor owned um even out there, you may have heard in the news, like a lot of the fires that have been started because they've been paying millions of dollars to their CEO and everything else and really neglecting some of the infrastructure that they need to be taken care of. And so there have been all these power outages, planned power outages happening. Meanwhile, in Sacramento, the Sacramento Metropolitan Utility District or SMUD, which is a special district, independent special district, their rates are 38% lower than PG&E's, 38% lower and they don't have anywhere, any of the kind of problems that pg e has. So this is the story, right? So then how do you tell it? So here's one example that we absolutely love from our friends at SESD. Check it out. If you live in South Utah County and get your power from SESD, did you know we've managed to keep your rates the same since March, 2009? That's 10 years. And after more than 110 years of reliably serving your community as a not-for-profit power provider, we figured it was time to formally introduce ourselves. We're SESD, South Utah Valley Electric Service District. We happily serve 4,000 customers just like you in South Utah County. SESD provides power to rural and mountain areas, as well as the cities of Woodland Hills and Elk Ridge. Some of our customers even reside in Spanish Fork, Salem, Payson and Santa Quinn. SESD is as unique as the diverse areas we serve. We're locals, working for locals, and we're a public power company that genuinely cares about giving you the fairest rates possible. With SESD, you only ever pay for the power you use, nothing else. Our service has the personal community touch. Call our office and you'll speak to an actual person, probably even someone you know. And out in the field, SESD linemen are the best of the best. Their deep local knowledge lets them respond quickly and effectively to any situation. When wildfires or snowstorms strike, we're working on the front lines in the toughest conditions. No matter the challenge, SESD has your back. And we don't keep you waiting. We get your power back on, fast. We've been here since the beginning, and we're as excited as ever to power your South Utah County. Give us a wave next time you see us out there in your community. SESD, reliable service, reasonable prices, power to light our future i love that video yeah so much so much to love there um not to mention the people themselves and uh we want to give a shout out to ava launch media um ava launch media helped do that avalanche for them. yeah it's avalanche 
like an avalanche. Oh, yeah, yeah, excuse um, me. <laughs> avalanche. Yeah, and if you go back one slide, it should show. Um, so you can learn more about them at that. Oh, I guess it's just uh, it only there. shows for a second. Okay, well, then we're teasing you. Quick, with write that. it down. <laughs> <laughs> Avalanche. Avalanche. Obviously, we have a professional producer helping us with this. Uh, <laughs> Avalanche yeah, Media, probably. we don't know anything about them other than we found out they were the ones that did that and SESD loved working with them. So <laughs> just thought it was really impressive. One of the things I wanted to bring up, however, is if you feel like you don't have the budget to hire a firm and you don't have the skill set or the time to try and produce your own video, think about all the different ways that story could have been told. That story would have been amazing on social media, it would have been amazing as a page on your site with little vignettes about the different jobs that people do at SESD. There's just a lot of different ways. So think, you know, like video is great, mm -hmm. but it isn't the only way. Yeah, and what I love about the way Avalanche Media helped work, work with them to do it, and by the way, SESD told us that that was extremely affordable. I mean, it was like not a $10,000 production or anything close to that. It was done very effectively you notice they didn't have any actual video they didn't have to come out and do a shoot this is something right now in covid you could produce and so and i loved like it you know it had the graphics it felt very personal but it, it was very simple to produce it was just like they just had to approve a script and presto they had you know they had something to share with their stakeholders so you can tell your story in a very like not labor intensive way where people have to coordinate a shoot and you have to be on camera and things that are uncomfortable. Uh, I thought it was, and it also looked like it was done with uh, cost effectively without, you know, having a really expensive production, which is important. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And you know, there are other resources. We didn't actually just include them in here, but but there are other resources like upwork.com. If you don't have staff or you don't have somebody local or somebody you want to work with, you can go to something like upwork.com and hire all sorts of people. You can hire writers, you can hire people who do video or animations or anything. And also very inexpensively. Uh -huh. And if you want to see the, um, how SESD tells their story on their about page and everything else, you can, it's SESD um, uh, of Utah.org. Again, that's SESD of Utah.org. So, and we love them too. They're really awesome. <laughs> so they are. All right. So Sloan, tell us how storytelling is personal. Well, I feel like I'm just kind of hammering the same message over and over <laughs> again. But, but I liked that last example in the sense that it wasn't really, it was like, it was about the community. It wasn't obviously about a person in the community. So there wasn't that much personality there. And yet, because you saw the different jobs and the different people answer the phone and the guy that's out on the truck and stuff like that, I felt like it was very personal. It was yeah. neat. Yeah, it is. Just don't tell Avalanche Media about this presentation because they'll probably have an intervention with our poor editing and quality. <laughs> first, <laughs> this is our first virtual talk ever, minus the other one that we recorded for the other talk. So yeah, I mean, like, we've done obviously we do webinars a lot, but this is just different because it's like in your head, mm -hmm. you want to be talking to people, not to a screen. I know the irony is that we're like saying make it personal, and here we are trying to make it personal to <laughs> in our separate COVID separated rooms, like right. and being able to be there with you. Cause you know, I have my and, dogs on screen. <laughs> well, you, you all know that Ann Terry throws a mean conference for oh, SBA no. in Colorado. We love being there. So anyway, yeah, I digress. So just a couple of the things we've been talking about include as particular employees or board members or volunteers, that same um, sanitary district I was talking about when we were doing a discovery for their website, they really wanted to use pictures of their field personnel. Mm -hmm. So they've got these great pictures of these guys with their trucks out doing their job. And so I see them in the neighborhood and I feel like I know them. I'm like, wait, haven't I seen you? Hey, you know. And connecting to the community members, the more specific, the better. And then also be thinking about why should it matter? Like, should it matter to the reader? And if so, does it affect them somehow? Is there an opportunity for them or something that they can get out of it? There's a great talk by Simon Sinek. It's called um, Focus on the Why. And Start I recommend, why, I think. what is it? Start with the why. Start with why, excuse me, start with why. And it's a really great talk where he really talks about the companies that really excel and it ex 
uh, talking about their brand and getting loyalty always make it very clear why they're doing what they're doing. And, you know, getting people to know what you do is one level of challenge, but really like why you do it and why you're so committed and why districts are important in general, such an important part of the story. And so that's what we're going to focus on too, is the feeling. So what is the feeling that they have after reading or hearing your story? So, um, you know, again, like we started before we showed the SCSD video, we said, we gave you the facts and the facts are um, special districts are an efficient way of delivering services. They're a good choice. But like, how did you feel after I said that? Um, assuming you weren't absolutely touched and overwhelmed, <laughs> like, then you can see why a video like what SCSD produced actually evokes the feelings so much better. Yeah. Yeah, so, so making people remember what they read too. So this is just some real basic information around how to present information if it's in writing. Use headings to break sections up. We talked about this in the other talk and some of our other talks about people's attention span and how few people actually read anymore. They scan and skim for content. Try to keep your figures and facts focused and easy to digest and possibly make them interesting by using infographics if you can. Um, there again, you can hire people to do this very inexpensively. In fact, there's even a service called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R, Fiverr.com yeah, yeah. out there that you can hire people very inexpensively who will quickly throw together a great infographic for you. And then start with the lead or nut graph. <laughs> Max, so excited. Um, so, and we're going to talk about this. Those are, those are newspaper terms. They come from old journalism. And we'll talk about what they are. The lead is just a funny way of spelling L-E-A-D, like the lead into your story. And um, the the nut, nut graph. Yeah, and a nut graph. So glad you asked. Um, <laughs> so the nut graph is short for nutshell paragraph. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that too. There, it's a little bit different. So the lead dates way, way, way back. Um, and it was really just slang for the story's first sentence, right? So there are two different types of leads. And one of them is much more just the facts, ma'am. And then that's the summary lead. So it's like who, what, where, when, like all the facts up in the first sentence so people can get what they need right up front. Um, this might, be good for some writing. It's not that interesting for most people. Um, so, you know, I guess for, for like, if you were a newspaper or a media outlet, then this is great for, you know, very factual reporting for news stories. But the other one is my favorite. Yeah, this is more like a press release, just the facts. The feature lead is interesting because this is like, you pace out the facts so you're telling a story in a like more indirect way but it's much more compelling and interesting to the person much more like a short story or something before you get to your point and it's so great for storytelling so they can be more emotional which is great if you can get empathy out of your reader especially as a special district fantastic you also can start by asking a question to kind of entice them to continue and find out what the answer is. So this is my, my emotional bitmoji. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just, we're going to now go through some examples. And so um, this is actually, this one is funny. So this is really by this guy, Dan Murphy. And it's interesting. I, I read it and I was like, what's he? Okay, rolled up next to the toilet. Okay. Oh, it's, oh, oh, is it paper? Right? And then the next version, I wrote this. In an effort to reduce paper waste, the city has adopted a new ordinance that makes grocery stores charge 10 cents per bag, right? And, and so maybe that is like super factual, but it's not that interesting. There's not much. And the first example might be a little over the top in terms of it's a little maybe too poetic or what have you, but it definitely is, makes you stop and think, right? So then we're going to look at the nut graph. So the nut graph or nutshell paragraph explains the news value. So it isn't just factual. It's a little more than just like numbers, 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 numbers. It's like, why does it matter to them? You know, there's, there's some value in there, kind of like the elevator pitch that we've all heard about. Like, why does somebody want to keep reading? 
and it can follow the lead. So you might have a very interesting little lead and then do a nut graph, or it can just operate instead of or as the lead. So we're going to look through some examples again. And this is kind of fun because um, to me, this is, again, and this is California, but this first version is like uh, water use regulations for retail water agencies. Okay, Governor Brown signed it. Oh, there's some bill numbers. There's droughts and climate change. Okay, I got it. Wow. I don't even know if this applies to me. I have no idea. So why do I care? And then here's another example. Same story, but I rewrote it. A prominent report about new water conservation passed. There's a statewide mandate not to take a shower and do laundry on the same day. Are you kidding me? Wait, I'm not going to be able to take, okay, well, that stinks, right? I'm going to read on to find out what it actually has to, like, what are these rules and how's it going to affect me? So just another example. And Max favorite slide. <laughs> and again, like the point of that, when you read the section about not being able to take a shower and do laundry on the same day, that evokes a feeling and that immediately resonates with people. So facts alone, I mean, facts are very, very important. And um, especially when the facts favor special districts so much in what they do, it's important to, you know, include those facts. But uh, we want to also remember what Maya Angelou points out, you know, I've learned that people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they never forget how you made them feel. Yeah, which really resonates for me in terms of special districts, because everybody we work with is so invested in their community. Mm -hmm. So your community needs to feel that. So now we're going to talk about a couple different methods. I mean, we could spend all day on this if we had all day together and we're not even together. So we're going to go through this very fairly quickly, but some other examples that we're going to give. You can start with statements, you can start with questions, you can have an interesting fact or a quote or like mini story about somebody, whatever. So we're going to look through a couple examples and see what we think. So this is an actual intro to an article that the um, California Special District Association's CEO wrote. So here in California, we do have this obscure state commission that is forcing costs onto local government and not letting them get reimbursed for them. So this is what the story was about. So he starts with a statement and this is the actual story. So just so you know, everything after this, I made up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is like, I, I'm a little, oh, wait, there's this, that's a little shocked, right? Other way. It's going to keep making me gasp over and over again. <laughs> um, you could start with a fact, right? And you can see my not Neil McCormick in here. So on average, people have seen their water rates go up 8,000% over the past five years, right? That's obviously not a fact, but it's just an example of something that's kind of like, okay, it's like very official. It's very straightforward. And darn you, Darn you not giving us funds to comply. And again, if you think about how you want people to feel when they read your story or watch your video or whatever, or hear your story, how do you want them to feel? Then you'll, you'll get a feel for how you want to intro the story because they'll, they'll be aligned, right? So here's with a quote. This, this really, the thing I like about this is this makes me feel bad for this general manager. It's like he doesn't want to. He understands that the customers, many are already struggling. Here in California, um, water districts are un, not during the COVID emergency stuff. They're not allowed to shut off water for non-payment of bills. So anybody who can't pay their bill, they still have water, which is very important. But imagine the financial impact, right? So this gives you a little bit of a feel for like, oh man, we're kind of in this together. Very and, you know, it's official because it's the statement by him. Um, and then with a story. So Mary Smith has been working two jobs for as long as she can remember. As a single mom with two young kids, the rising cost of utilities makes it impossible to make ends meet otherwise. <laughs> right? So, so there's just like different methods to evoke different feels. Or you can ditch all of that and use humor. 
humor is my personal favorite uh, <laughs> for injecting it. That's why Sloan and I goof off and have a lot of fun because we, we love humor. And <laughs> one, and this is not a very like professional example at all. In fact, this was something that had no budget. Um, it was a contest that um, was run to have students talk about the value of special districts. And yeah, so here in California, the association puts on this video contest every year and the kids win scholarship money and they don't have to, I mean, they might have a budget, who knows? They might oh. have a drone, they might have whatever, but they win scholarship money for the first, second and third place. And it's so great because you see the gamut, like one of the ones we saw was actually very professionally done and I actually didn't like it as much. This one was done by a kid and it's just fun. So we wanted to share it with you. All right. Now ain't that there a sight to see. Old Sally's house burning up like a match. If only there was some type of help. <laughs> well, Billy Bob, Joe, you're in luck today. Now, who <laughs> might you be? I'm Jordan, and I'm from the future. From the future? I've always wanted to. Anyways, let me show you something from my futuristic digital display. Hey Billy, this here behind me is a fire station, an emergency response system that helps with fire related problems. There are also many other special districts, just as important as this one, including water, irrigation, parks and recreation, and healthcare districts, each playing a part in creating a safe and sustainable community. Now, back to you Jordan. As you can see, special districts are a vital part of society. And without them, we'd end up in unfortunate circumstances. You know what? I'm gonna start the very first special district here in Hill Valley. Billy, now you go have fun with that. Anyways, you can find out more about special districts at districtsmakedifference.org. Also, share this video along with your friends to raise awareness about these special programs that help our state and other states so much. I'm Jordan from the future, and I hope you enjoy. All right. <laughs> so it's so silly, but you can see even in that like very more casual context, like it's a great way to tell the story and that would inform folks, especially if they didn't even know what a special district was. Yeah. Yeah. So thinking about what resonated with you most, um, you know, like I said, there's going to be different methods and different mediums, depending on what story you're trying to tell, who you're trying to speak to. Obviously, in some ways, video is very powerful for a younger audience because they tend to be on social media more and things like that. But you know, if you think through what you're trying to say, how you're trying to make people feel, then you'll be able to come up with the best way of doing that. <sighs> so, <anything>. yeah, so <laughs> you've got the story now. Um, so looking at cost effective ways to get the word out. Yeah, and these are all, you know, fairly obvious. Put it on your website. Um, you, email campaigns, if you aren't doing this already, you really should be. Once you get them up and running, it's very inexpensive and very easy. Social media is so perfect for personal stories. Um, in our other talk on guerrilla marketing, we go into this a little bit more. Um, but, but social media is a great spot. And if you don't already have a social media account for your district, um, in that talk, we go through some of the statistics of where people are, like how many people are on which, which platform and which age groups and all kinds of stuff. The local media slash newspapers, of course, this is the same old school, you know, give them a really good story and they'll probably want to run it, especially if it's a positive story, because we could all use some of that right now. And then guerrilla marketing techniques, which again, we did talk about a lot. The idea behind guerrilla marketing is that it's scrappy, it's inexpensive, it very often includes your community to help spread the word. So that comes back to social, of course, but in that talk, we go into some other fun stuff like what about chalk campaigns and community created murals and- Flash mobs. Flash mobs and <laughs> examples actually in that talk too that you might enjoy if you haven't seen it. So there's lots of different things you can do and guerrilla marketing techniques are, are of all things, 
very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we bring up in the gorilla marketing method talk too as well that I, I think is really effective is events and even at your events, how to tell your story. Because you may have like an annual event or a fundraiser and getting your story to be experienced by the people that are coming to that event, not in an obvious way. You don't need to like, you know, stop the whole event to like have somebody read facts about your organization. Again, this is just <laughs> sharing don't. the stories. Maybe it's folks that, you know, kids that have ridden in the fire truck or, or other things. You know, what was really cool is we had a, a Make-A-Wish kid uh, here with our local um, sanitation district and he wanted to be a truck driver. And so they did a whole thing where they put him in the truck and, you know, he, they gave him like a second little wheel that he could steer on the other side and he, they got to go like do garbage truck driving. And they had like a whole, almost like a parade route where people were waving to him. And, um, you know, it was very indirect. It wasn't to publicize the district, but it was so cool that the district was reflected in such a positive, such a community affirming way um, with this make a wish kid and to help his wish come true as he was battling cancer. And so um, just really, really powerful. Very, I mean, and that was using staff that are already being paid. It was not a big, um, not, I mean, there are really no special costs for that other than just people volunteering their time and uh, really anchoring the relationship between the community and the kid. I just thought that was very cool. Yeah, and some of the things that we're hearing about lately, and I'm sure you've all heard some of this too, we've heard of fire districts doing parades of engines around town and like waving at kids, you know, during this time of social distancing or physical distancing or whatever you like to call this miserable situation we're in. Um, the idea to get out into the public so the public is seeing you and you're visible We've got a great blog post on our website about Polk Fire, Polk County Fire in Oregon. They're one of our customers and they did the coolest thing. He, he put a form on his website where people could sign up for the fire department to stop by and put a stay home, save lives sign in their front yard. This is when things first started getting really bad and the numbers were really going up. And then he put that form on the website and then he went to social media and said, hey, would you like one of these signs that they had ordered? We'll put it in your yard. And then he had all of his firefighters out in the community deployed. They each had a little section of the community and they were on their engines. And as the orders came in, he had his firefighters installing them in these yards, sometimes 20 minutes after the person had said, I want to sign. That's amazing because first of all, you're supporting this, like, you know, taking care of one another but you're out in the community. He wanted to think of something that would make them visible. So, you know, and supportive. So there's so much you can do. Just got to get creative. Mm -hmm. So to recap what we've covered today, um, storytelling, it's so different from just writing, like factual releases and facts, again, they're so important, but alone they do not have the power to really stick in people's minds. People don't, they forget the facts, but they remember how they felt and they remember why they felt that way. And, yeah. you know, in our community, like everyone who, they remember how they felt about that wish kid and the wish story and all the great people that make that happen. And they feel like that district is theirs, not some, you know, taxation entity that they have to pay fines and fees to. Um, you know, it's just so, so important. Um, we talked about why it's important to tell your story. You know, special districts serve an essential function. You are good for the communities you serve. And the large, large, overwhelming majority of districts are almost taken for granted by their communities and they're overlooked. And so if you don't tell your story, somebody else will. And you face an ex existential threat if you do not communicate the value that you're providing. Like and special the first districts story that you hear, that they hear about you, you want to be a good one right? Because then they have a good impression to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's the same part of your, like of the, your community's brains that um, think about people and reputation. If you get to know, a, you know, an elected official and you have name recognition before there's a story about them, you automatically question. It's like, oh, but wait, but I know them. Are we sure? I need to learn more as opposed to like, you're hearing about a bad thing and a new name you've never heard. You automatically, you, it's almost like you have to be proven and shown that they're not a problem or they don't have all these issues. And so again, it's just so important to have that name recognition and to create those feelings for folks to hold that. 
So in talking a little bit, you know, about what is your story, I hope we've given you some facts and some figures that arm you when you're communicating with the public. Um, it also surprises us the extent, and I don't think this is the case in Colorado because, you know, SDA Colorado is very sophisticated and the districts in Colorado really seem to have their act together, quite honestly, um, yeah. compared to other states, not to speak ill of other states, but I mean, come on. And uh, so I I'm always impressed with how much you know, but I do hope that we have communicated some facts and figures that, you know, are not news to you and are things that you can use when talking about the importance that your district plays in the community. Because again, it's getting, it's not only getting the public to know it, it's getting districts to know it so they can communicate it. To exactly. The we want you to be as inspired by yourselves as we're inspired by you. And uh, we talked about some examples and tips. We uh, talked about, um, you know, Avalanche Media and some of the other companies that are helping special districts tell their story and ways that do not need an uh, enormous production value or you uh, require you to put out a big expense, you know, uh, CSDA did it with, you know, just the scholarship program. I mean, the kids didn't, I don't think, yeah, other than potentially winning that scholarship money that they were all produced without any formal budgets. I mean, they're scrapping yeah. ways to do it without being completely unprofessional. I don't recommend you hire some students to tell your story necessarily, but you can, you know, have a contest or get some ideas out there. You could share the contest things. All of that is free. They're, um, you know, they're going to reshare it on social media. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And and back to the inspiration, you know, I mean, unsung heroes is so cheesy, I know, but it really is true. And we really would like to challenge you to start using a hashtag that can be recognized and shared by other districts. You know, we, we try to follow all of our districts. We've got 500 of them we work with now. We, we try to follow them all on social, the ones that are, and when we see things that they're sharing, we're trying to reshare them out into the community too. And I know that the associations are doing the same. So I challenge you to really start to tell your story and hashtag it any chance you can so that people can start to see this thread across states, across types of districts, across types of services, of all the amazing work that you do. And if you do that, then the rest of us who are your allies can help amplify that message. Mm -hmm. Reshare it. So we have some resources for you. Um, Sloan found some great TED Talks on storytelling specifically, um, yeah. which is just really inspiring. I mean, we love TED Talks anyway for great ideas and, and inspiration. And so encourage you to, to check those out. Again, there was also the TED Talk called Start With Why by Simon mm -hmm. Sinek, which is such a good one. Um, it's yeah. actually in our former life, lives when we helped um, special districts and others uh, design their websites from the ground up, we'd actually have people watch that TED Talk <laughs> before they started. Before to, they wrote their mission statement or their purpose statement. Yeah. Uh -huh. it yeah. Really, yeah, it really changed the room. Yeah. And then the feveredmutterings.com. I don't know this guy from Adam, but his resources were so helpful. No, really, when I was trying to wrap my head around this topic, because it's not like I'm a storyteller by job or, you know, by training or anything. There are people who do this for a living and they're all very impressive. So I was like a little intimidated, but none of them care about you as much as we do. So <laughs> we, thought, yeah. we will have this talk and we'll talk about this subject. And, um, I'm certain that you will be able to get your hands on the slides, I would think, as a PDF, which has all those links in there. Um, you know, if you go to our blog, we've got a ton of content just for special districts. There's, and it's all free. There are lots of um, articles on everything from how to write a disaster plan to how to run a remote meeting to how to recite the Pledge of Allegiance remotely without sounding awful, um, <laughs> without <laughs> just sounding all awful. kinds of stuff. And then we also, yeah. And then we also sponsor or not sponsor. We created a free online forum just for special districts that allows you to communicate with each other across the country with districts of your type that are in different states with districts that are in your state of different types, um, just as a way for you all to collaborate and, and make each other stronger. So that's available on our website too. You can get to it from there. So we find special districts so inspiring and we love what you do for the community. We love that you're good for America and that you're that really democracy in action at the most local and most effective level. And that's something, especially in these times that people need to see examples of. 
So if there's anything Sloan or I can do to help you tell your story better, there's resources you can con we can connect you with. You know, just email us. I'm Mac at GetStreamline.com. Sloan is Sloan at GetStreamline.com. We'll answer you. And we look forward to coming back out. I know we were in Keystone last year. It's so much fun with everybody. And we can't wait to get back together again, not trapped in this virtual, you know, whatever this is that we're in. Now. <laughs> but actually there with you in person, having fun. Um, we just can't wait to come back and see you all again. And, you know, we encourage you to keep telling your stories and sharing your stories with us. And yeah, anything else? Nope, nope that's all. Thanks so much for taking the time to um, hang out with us, so to speak. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you next year. All right. Take, Take care. care. Be well. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.